All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. No actual haute couture runway show. Impossible to vibrate closely in one breath at the sight of the same silhouettes on the catwalk. To celebrate style, femininity, elegance, all together in the same venue. In fairy tales, ordeals always come up to cast a new light on our deep intentions. So for this particular season, Julian Fournier has chosen to invite you inside this house's core values. When we told our haute couture customer that this time the traditional haute couture collection could be organized, their reaction surprised us. This is great, you can show us specifically your new collection in an exclusive way. The exceptional ladies who buy haute couture masterpieces for themselves enjoy the genuine designs, the quality of fabrics, the refinement in the finishings and the embellishments, and the signature amazing cuts by Julian Fournier. Above all, they are looking for exclusivity. So this season, Julian Fournier has decided to organize only private presentations for real haute couture customers. Either in Paris, or if you invite him, in any private place you wish. He will travel himself to visit you and show his new designs just for you in an exclusive manner. This is a full part of the haute couture experience. Julien Fournier never repeats the same design for two customers. Not even if customers based on different continents ask for the same design. Once you buy it, you are the only person in the world to own it. So it really makes sense for Julien Fournier today to fully follow the tradition of haute couture, starting from a sketch made for one person only, working on garment volume on the mannequin, developing the best fabrics with the top weavers of natural fibers in Europe, collaborating with the very best craftsmen in France constantly training our team of expert seamstresses. All of these tasks Julien Fournier actually masters himself. Only in this way can Julien Fournier consider to sign each of his designs with his name, because he makes sure that he can be proud of them. Industrial ready-to-wear and fast fashion are very much questioned about their impact on the environment. Fully in the haute couture logic, Julien Fournier is proud to announce that he always orders only the fabric he needs. Here actually never is one piece produced and then destroyed because it wasn't sold. So waste of fabrics is reduced to the very strict minimum. This is a daily concern for each and every member of the staff. In his eponymous house, the couture house he has founded and fully controls, Julien Fournier is feeling completely free to decide what he wants to do and how he wants to achieve it. This freedom and independence of thought are paramount for a haute couture house. Julien Fournier stands behind each and every project in his realm. Each creative impulse follows is intuition only. Women are used to spot clothes in shops, try them on, and then decide on acquiring them. With the haute couture approach, the process is entirely different. You see first a sketch of the imagined look. In the first fitting, you then try on a prototype made in a plain and simple white fabric. The atelier of Julien Fournier has built the garment in 3D. It has given this sketch its volume, and with the first fitting, Julien Fournier is checking the perfect fit for each silhouette. 
Only then, together with the customer, does Julien Fournier choose the right fabric, the texture, its feel, and of course, its precise color, the exact finishing, the magic embellishments. When you are buying an old couture piece, you're not simply buying a garment. What you are buying is also an experience, an adventure. The price tag for a haute couture piece might seem extreme. It actually reflects the indispensable number of hours of work to design, cut and assemble the pieces. Because they are expensive fabrics, because it takes expert craftsmanship, because it takes time to make, because it is made just for you. The price is given only when the real costs have been estimated in order to make sure that the price is fair and justified. Julien Fenier is not a platform serving many different markets. Julien Fenier is a discreet and modest haute couture house aiming to give the best service to its customers worldwide. Uh, for the fall winter collection, I wanted to make uh, a new story more um, positive. With my team, we build um, like, uh, yeah, like a cocoon and bringing very positive energy to, to the women. This collection is really uh, embodying a little bit 70s spirit. TV shows like Dim Dam Dom or the interview of Denise Glazer. For me, it's, it's one of the most modern and creative time ever. This time I made also color of the earth, um, like terracotta, yellow saffron, camel brown. My focus was on the light, so I used satin and reflecting fabrics, and the embroideries was the key of the collection. I did on pure shapes a strong detail, which is like reproduction in, the, in another way of tiaras. I ask to blow glass makers to recreate the emeralds, the uh, topaz. This technique mixed with the cut of the dress, mixed with the music we choose, mixed with everything is uh, full of emotions. I think when you are facing difficulties, you have no other option than to find solutions. My main uh, um, wish was to protect my team. Together, we, we made everything possible to uh, stay creative and positive. You know, when I knew that the Fashion Week was cancelled, I was not so disappointed. I was a bit um, worried about the work, about my team, about the future. So uh, it pushed me to be more strong and, uh, and more creative. I don't know what the future will be. It's a movie, tomorrow it can be a ballet, uh, after tomorrow, I have no idea. Let's do now the present with a nice video clip, like a short movie. Uh, I would love to do a show in January, but who knows?
My name is Electra, the unhappy. My companion is grief. Mother? Mm -hmm. Remember what you told me that I could tell you anything? Yeah, I remember. And I meant it. Careful. Because my words are tough. You're going to get angry with me. No, I won't. My mind is open. My thoughts are pure. I'm sick of seeing you in front of the mirror. Fixing your hair. Painting your face. All for adventures with men. What has your life become? You're old. Nobody wants you. It is what it is, Electra. You were born to love your dad. Get on with it. and love this pickable, huh? I know nothing about love. I hate love. You're a shameless coward. A slut. Beg your pardon? Don't you talk to me like that. I was born from your disgust. <laughs> Stop whining. to keep moving. No! Once upon a time, death made me think of life, and life made me think only of death. To live is to die. Being born means starting to die. Life is slow dying. Death is to be reborn.
embracing evil fate and secrets of the past. If I had been able to read the past clearly, I might foresee the future that awaits us, Electra. But I dare not predict it. Not yet. Most of what I've seen is about you, my daughter. The future is yours, not mine. And so, I ask you for forgiveness. And I tell you, I am happy that you have found your way in life, my love. I wish you all the happiness. I'm not asking you for forgiveness. I forgive myself. And I hope there is a hell for the good women somewhere. è stata iniziata durante il lockdown già sapevamo di non poter fare un reale show mi è stato immediatamente chiaro che il mio referente doveva essere legato al sogno al fantastico e quindi uno dei miei film e uno dei miei registi preferiti in questo senso è Matteo Garrone con il racconto dei racconti all'inizio ero anche un po' spaventata all'idea di proporre una cosa abbastanza inusuale quella di fare un film su progetti inanimati, su un, un viaggio di un baule, con referenze storiche anche molto importanti perché durante la seconda guerra mondiale in Francia c'è stato il teatro della moda, altro non era che la collaborazione tra artisti e couturier e che 
che cosa fecero? In questa situazione di grande difficoltà si misero insieme e realizzarono delle bambole dove i couturier realizzavano questi fantastici vestiti e gli artisti creavano gli sfondi di dove abitavano queste piccole bambole e queste venivano spedite per il mondo e servivano in qualche modo a promuovere che l'alta moda francese era viva. Con Matteo ci siamo trovati proprio sul gusto, lui lavora con riferimenti pittorici per cui ama tantissimo l'arte, la mitologia, lavora nel cinema come un artigiano. E quindi credevo che poteva essere un grande interprete di una collezione alta moda che parla del savoir faire, parla dell'artigianato. In un modo diverso io mi sento una designer artigiano. Inoltre il suo immaginario così sognante si lega anche della storia di Dior. Dior nel 1933 è stato il primo a fare una mostra di artisti surrealisti. Questo mi ha portato anche a dei riferimenti di artiste che io amo molto. Lynn Miller, Dora Maar, Eleanor Carrington, Jacqueline Lamba e Dorothea Tanning. E le loro fotografie così surrealiste sono state un punto di ispirazione per immaginare un modo diverso di fare la collezione. L'idea di base è stata quella di provare a creare una vera collezione ma in scala. Per cui abbiamo usato dei manichini alti 40 cm, possiamo dire che in realtà sono delle miniature che hanno richiesto una cura quasi maniacale dove le gonne, le giacche, le fodere è come un reale capo di haute couture.
A woman's work. A woman's prerogative. A woman's time to embrace, she must put herself first. A woman's touch. A sacred geometry. A 
I know where you start, where you end, how to please, how to curse. Yes, I heard you needed me. Yes, I'm here to open you. Yes, I know that your heart is blue.
de faire un galon qui rappelle les boutons. Il y a un rythme dans le tissage et il faut essayer justement de retrouver cet équilibre qu'on a dans le tissage, de le retrouver dans le galon. Et là, c'est compliqué. Ces tissus-là sont très compliqués. Ils sont vraiment complexes. J'y se croise la tête. Ah, c'est super beau. Hein. Oh, c'est oh, d'une légèreté, c'est très beau. Votre fruit n'est pas brodé, hein. il, est, il est doré et gris. Ce qui est brodé, c'est ça, c'est le, le devant, tu vois, les bijoux, là. Après, le tweed, euh, comme ça, il, il est or. Voilà. En fait, c'est la broderie euh, Montex. C'est un travail avec des fils de tweed, et des rajouts de fils, de paillettes, de tulle, de chenilles. En fait, ils ont dépioté un autre tweed pour refaire un, un tweed brodé. Mmh. <rire> C'est très très beau le travail, c'est de la folie quoi. Quand on a tous les petits détails. Euh... Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire avec Comment Alors, vous faites maintenant Là que vous on allez est faire en train de la renforcer, on va lui donner un petit côté un petit peu plus nerveux. On va mettre une matière dedans et euh, on va la faire vraiment euh, ceinture quoi. La rendre plus nerveuse. Oui, la rendre plus nerveuse. <rire> c'est le boléro euh, complètement brodé euh, chez euh, Le Sage. C'est juste un, un petit bijou. Très difficile de, de retoucher en fait dans une broderie euh, comme ça quand même. Notre métier, c'est ça. On apprend toujours à travailler toutes les matières euh, au fur et à mesure euh, de la carrière. Donc on la j'y touche pas, on laisse comme ça. C'est plus naturel. Ok, parfait. En haute couture, en général, dans la dentelle, on ne fait jamais de couture. On fait des incrustations. Ça se fait au bord des fleurs. Et donc du coup, une fois que c'est fait, on ne peut plus voir. Euh, là, il y a une couture ici. Mais en fait, il faut vraiment le savoir. Impossible de le voir. Voilà. Est tellement mignon, c'est les boutons ici, c'est les boutons de bijoux, c'est très très joli. Ça, c'est du chic, ça. Ah, ça, c'est du chic. C'est vraiment ça, la haute couture. C'est justement acheter euh, quelque chose euh, d'exception et que, qui ne sera pas vu sur, euh, sur tout le monde. Wow. C'est ça, Chanel. <rire>